Hi, everyone. So today is my 100 days as executive director at Evidence for Democracy. There's so much going on in the science and political landscape in Canada these days that my time here has just flown by, by in the blink of an eye. Of course, for us at E4D, that means there's no shortage of work to be done these days. And the team has done a lot in these 100 days. So we thought we'd do a quick recap generously taking our cues from prominent political figures, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand and the famous AOC in the States, who both did two minute videos reviewing their key milestones. So I'm going to do my best to give you a super quick update of everything or almost everything we've been working on in these 100 days in under two minutes, hopefully. Can I do it? <clears throat> okay. Start the clock. I kicked off my time here by jumping right into the 2021 federal budget, which was the first budget tabled in two years. The team pulled out all the science and evidence related investments and shared that list with our community. We followed that up with commentary on the sort of mixed bag of science and related investments and provided some food for thought on Canada's persistent lack of a coordinated national science strategy. Next up, we launched our new toolkit for addressing misinformation, which laid out updated best practices to proactively address misinformation before it's been shared or what to do after it's been shared. We've all been there. These new recommendations followed the most up-to-date evidence from this quickly evolving area of research. Shortly after the release of this new toolkit, we shared our new report on misinformation in Canada, which really brought to light the need for more strategic research in the Canadian context, and also identified some potential policy options for addressing misinformation at scale. Also up in new research, we released part one of our two-part report, Eyes on Evidence. So part one launched our adapted framework for assessing transparency of evidence use in government policy, which was originally a framework developed by Sense About Science in the UK. In the next phase of this work and underway as I speak, we'll be using this framework to systematically assess the transparency of evidence use in the Canadian federal government. And this week we have a summer student joining us to help out with this next phase. Welcome, Ivana. Backing up a bit, in May, we wrapped up a training series for the BC public servants where we covered skills in public engagement and advocacy to really help them develop and hone the tools that they need to strengthen science integrity in the province. Meanwhile, we also developed a plain language summary toolkit for the Impact Assessment Agency of Canada to help make the impact assessment process more transparent. Now we're adapting that toolkit for a public audience and we'll be sharing it with our community really soon. And most recently, I've spent the last couple of me weeks meeting with MPs and their staffers talking about ways to make sure that science and evidence are prioritized in our national investments and collective decisions as we move out of the pandemic and into the next normal. These meetings are also helping us to prepare for an ever more likely federal election. And as part of these efforts, we will soon be bringing you an update on where things stand with the recommendations from the 2017 Fundamental Science Review, also fondly known as the Naylor Report. And really quickly, we also closely followed the House of Commons vote for a new standing committee on science and research, which was unanimously approved and started a new project with the Professional Institute of the Public Service of Canada, also known as PIPS. So was that two minutes? I hope so. Thanks so much for tuning in to hear about my first 100 days at E4D. I'm looking forward to many, many more. And of course, as always, my virtual door is open and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.